Jeffrey Erlings is, without any question, one of the fastest motocross riders in the world. And apart from being so fast, is also spectacular and really an aggressive riding when it comes to battle for the first place. We collected five of the most epic moments on Jeffrey Erlings' career. In 2013's Valkenbar GP, Jeffrey Erlings was a man in the mission. On his home race, the Dutch rider had a bad start, but then was making an outstanding race through the field. He took some extra time to overtake Glenn Kaldenoff, but he decided to show some attitude during the overtake. One year before, when we were at the Portuguese MXGP, Jeffrey Erlings was on an amazing battle for the championship with Tommy Searle. But in fact, on the last moto, Erlings took a lot of time to overtake Mel Pocock on the lappers, and on the end of the race, during the interview, Erlings was just being Erlings and giving some special words to him. After the press conference, his manager, Stefan Evers, decided to have a long and straight conversation with Erlings during his badass times. I made a win and that what counts and I put two uh, more points on Tommy but Poco should watch out. Listen to that. Okay, thank you Jeff. We'll see you in the podium in a minute. Twenty twenty one and Erlings decided to take no extra risk. But this time even Monticelli overjumped on the first lap and landed on Erlings' shoulder. Even with a broken shoulder, Erling was able to win the motor. On the Dutch GP, this time was Prado making his debut on the MX2 GP class. Erlings was on his last year of MX2 and wanted to have a perfect season, but the young Spanish rider was there to chime. Prado gave his best and Erlings had to fight through a lot of laps in order to be able to overtake the Spanish rider and trust me, he was not really happy about it. As they disappear, they've got the same images on our, but what we're watching here on the big screen, opposite the grandstand. So we might hear it through our headsets. The roar of the crowd. Hurd is going outside, inside, outside, inside, looking for that momentum. Prado cuts the line away from Hurlings, who are looking to go in the inside again through this next turn. He's got close to Lapa to a go. He's close again now, but Prado will carry that speed around the outside. Hurlings just loses out again. <laughs> and he's just absolutely devastated, isn't he? He just can't believe what's going on here. Jeffrey Hurlings, it's just almost like now. Hurlings up, looking for a way through. This time, he does. Right in front of the main. Oh, Prado. Hurlings definitely disapproving because Hurlings is going for the championship. Prado is going for a race win. And Hurlings did not like that. The nudge down the inside from Prado. Prado just absolutely throwing everything at Hurlings here. He just wants to go and win a race. And he's involving himself in Hurlings' championship chase. And Hurlings is shaking his head. He is annoyed at Prado. Looking to line up Prado here. I wouldn't be surprised if he just gives him a bit of an attitude check here. But keeps his head down. Just gets on with it. He knows that Prado is going to be around the outside. He might even run alongside him down by the finish line area here, Prado.
about uh, the riding styles and, uh, and all that. But this was one of the most outstanding the, uh, moments of Motocross. Erlings was on his second like year and trying to be one of the best riders in MX2 and Roxon was fighting to take the first title in MX2. They were teammates but Erlings put on an amazing show defending the lead with Roxon trying to pass it everywhere. It was one of the most outstanding moments and I was able to attend the event live and it was so exciting to watch this battle between Erlings and Roxon for the first place. Here we go again, in the outside, through the waves, Portuguese fans getting well into it. Roxon just doubling in on the first bit there, I mean. <laughs> and landing in on the berm as well, look at it now, down the side, he's not going to go around. He's going to square off. No, Jeffrey's got the, the, the faster line up the hill there. So Roxon then again working the outside lines, he's going to come out of there nice and early, is he? Well, no, he just takes a bit of a stab, loses a bike length or so as uh, he drops downhill. As we said a moment ago, Hurling's just utilising all the insides, making his teammate work around the outside where he has to, follow where he needs to. And I think actually just through that wave section and downhill, if he hasn't done him by the finish line, Ken Roxon, I think uh, that might be the area where he feels uh, it's going to be the best position. Look at Hurlings protecting the inside through there again, coming across the, the pit lane. Roxon, though, is he going to square off? No, he gets a little bit wobbly, but look at that, he's got a good drive. It's a mistake, it's a mistake from the teammate, Hurlings, who now falls the pit, and he's not going to back out of this challenge either. And he does well to keep his own KTM ahead of his teammate, and Roxon just losing the front on the face of that jump into that right hand up. We've got a back marker ahead of him, that's uh, David Kuh uh, Chuchi on the Latvian X, uh, sorry, on the Latvian Alchny Honda. I do feel a bit sorry for Jeffrey Hurlings actually because one tiny mistake is going to lose him the lead. I'm pretty sure that Ken's going to like, you know, eke out like a second at least over the following lap. You know, the race is going to be over. Just to keep people informed, uh, Max Anstey's still in third place, but uh, uh, Zach Osborne like less than a second behind him now. So uh, Zach like trying to make a push late on uh, to take that third place and he was actually like a second quicker than the, the Englishman on that one. And Gautier Portland still hovering down there in fifth, not really going forward as these two now really start to turn up the heat on each other. And this is the area where we're saying a moment ago, no room, very no close through there. And watch Hurlings now, he goes inside, there's a back marker ahead of Roxon, he can't do the slingshot through that turn. And uh, that's where I thought he was going to get the drive around this right-hander, jump alongside Hurlings as he did a lap ago, and maybe square off and get better drive. But look at him, hard on the brakes, tries it again though. And we've seen some action in the past couple of years over there, down that part of the circuit between the uh, two Yamahas, a bit of parts and Kai Rowley, remember? Yeah. And uh, as long as these two don't, um, well, they'll do well to avoid such a... <laughs> Philip Hart's left with a broken finger, I think. He wasn't, wasn't too happy that day. He wasn't. Well, look at these two now, really letting it all hang out. I think Jeffrey Hurley, a moment ago, got the wake-up call that he needed. Not that he needed one anyway, but uh, just his teammate showing enough of a front wheel as they came through the finish line area a lap ago. Four more laps. Gerald Weaver hangs out the board to Ken Roxon. Anstey, 20 seconds behind this battle in third place. Again, a mistake from Hurlings. Uses the same line. Both now. Uh, I'll tell you what, when I mean, they're whipping inside, opposite direction. Yeah, but he's got the inside coming up this hill and he's just making himself as big as possible. Roxon's got a lot of work to do to pass he's on that outside still line. Still got to go round and command the inside down this next section. And he's not managed to do that there, but he goes again to the outside. I mean, Ken's going to need two pretty big scrubs on those two jumps coming across the finish line to try and get the drive to pass Jeffrey on that. I don't think it's a, it's a practical place. And uh, the thing that I. I was worried about them when they scribbed in opposite direction. Oh, the front wheel goes from Hurlings. When they scrib in the opposite directions, there's that real danger of the rear wheels touching. <laughs> yeah. They can't do anything about that, you know, when they're side by side. I think that would be quite a phenomenal end to this race tonight. Well, oh, it would be. Oh, Brock's in there. He's done it. Down the inside, works nice the outside. Come across. Oh, oh, he has to back oh. out of the challenge, just like he did last year. And a marker as well. And that's Sean Mitchell on the Route 77 MVRD Honda. Teammate to Mattis Caro, who I think will be back in uh, Sweden in about three weeks' time. Right, Hurlings has got a breather here, Paul. Is he going to win? Mistake. Who's going to win? He's made a mistake coming out of that turn as well. That allowed Roxon back in. Um, <laughs> it can either go. Well, there's three scenarios here. Hurlings wins, Roxon wins, or they both end up in a heap. <laughs> <laughs> I think it'd be a bit silly not to bet on Ken here. I think he's just... Uh, he'll get desperate. He will get desperate. And I think that's why Hurlings might win it. Oh! the back end from Hurlings almost comes around and uh, hits the corner first going into that left-hander but uh, he manages to keep his head composed 
Face full of roost again for Roxon. This is the hardest it's probably had to work to, for a Moto win this year, certainly. I tell you, we don't mind seeing these two out front, you know, for most of the rest of the year if they keep racing like this. Are they going to get across the line? Yeah, it's going to be three laps. Yeah, it's going to be a long way to go. Oh. Look at that. Oh, it's mistake gone there. through this yeah. time. And look at that, two laps running. Hurlix went to the inside, made a mistake. He heard his teammate round the outside of him. This is uh, now where Hurlix needs to respond. Is he going to go after him? Backmarker moves out of the way. Is that lead? I think it might be. Yeah, it's one of the Husqvarna's, that's for sure. And, uh, it's not Lupino. Lupino's down in 13th, so... So Roxon now, he's maybe going to try and pull the pin and humiliate his teammate. And in doing so, might make a mistake. But uh, how will Hurlix respond here? Roxon already looking over his shoulder to see if he's broken his teammate. Look oh. at that! And just riding on the ragged edge is Ken Roxon. And I wouldn't be surprised if Hurling saw that. That was the moment he went through on the right-hand side there. Number 94. Well, this was two laps ago. That was because the first Hurling's... attempt, wasn't it? Yeah. The first attempt, though, probably, probably was about the 12th. But, See uh, the scrub off there, awesome. And these two have been like this now for what, the last 15 minutes pretty oh, much? the front is almost tucking, yeah. Yeah, that was a couple of laps ago as well. So really... If you like this video, don't forget to smash the like the button, to subscribe our channel and share it with your friends. Mistake. And his teammate Ken Roxon...